formation approach for uh, special temporal modeling of the environmental impacts of the climate change in Dying Lakes Basin. And this is actually talk which, uh, I mean, which I have prepared from our recent project that was actually carried out in international, uh, uh, under international collaboration in University Humboldt University of Berlin. And uh, we had actually this project initially was funded by Alexander von Humboldt Foundations. The initial version was scenario-based special modeling of land use and color change effects on food security in a case study of Urmia Lake Basin. We carried out actually this project in international collaboration with Humboldt University of Berlin, University of Salzburg in Austria, University of Tabriz in Iran, Hiroshima University in actually Japan, uh, and also University of Munster in Germany as well. So uh, you all know that uh, right now, one of the major challenges that we do have is climate change. Climate change is actually indeed one of the critical uh, uh, actually a uh, natural hazard that we are having nowadays and it has uh, many environmental aspects such as droughts, such as actually food security and also many environmental degradation caused by climate change. This is actually very obvious and I'm not actually going to have a further discussion about this because uh, this is obviously uh, I mean, well known for everybody almost. One of the major challenge and also one of the major aspects of climate change right now that we are facing is about droughts. Droughts could be actually, you all know that could be, is one of the major aspects of climate change that it, uh, and it's also caused very environmental challenges such as uh, global warming, such as actually lake of fresh water and many other aspects. As a result of these droughts, right now we, uh, we we actually observe that many lakes around the world uh, face very critical environmental situation. You all know that there are about 140 lakes around the world, that this 140 lakes stores about 70% fresh water of the uh, globe. So this is actually most of the lakes being uh, under critical situation of climate change. And so it is very critical that we also have some analysis regarding the environmental impact of climate change on these lakes, because these lakes are very critical for food security, for actually wildlife, uh, for actually ecosystems of the human and also on the neighborhood, uh, I mean, community around the world. One of these most critical lakes that it has been actually changing very uh, fast on the impacts of climate change is located in Iran, which is actually Umia Lake, which is very, uh, it is actually hyper salty lakes. And as you could see, over the past 30 years, the lake intensive climate change that was going on. So you can see, for example, here, the area has actually, this, I mean, gone in different years and finally finally that we have left very small part of the lake right now and because of the lake troughs we have intensive uh, salt lands and also very uh, salinization and environmental degradation going on exactly because of the lake troughs. You can also see here the temperature and also changes in perception of the lake over the past 30 years. As I indicated, the lake is actually hyper salty. And you can see here that intensive amount of salt left around the lake, and around the lake that local actually winds and also local climate impact it because they take the wind from the, the, the salts from the salty lands carry out to the cities and out to the farmland, destroy all ecosystem. For example, you can see here, farmlands around the lake being destroyed because of the soil salinization and also old sars being actually dried up because of the soil salinization. Again, ecosystem being impacted. You could see it a nice island. So now it's actually free of water and very actually challenges going on. Again, you can see again, so here that, for example, there is a uh, salt dust storms taking resourcing from the 
uh, salty lands lifted by uh, lake actually draws and then they take carry the salt storms and also carry to the uh, actually other areas so based on this critical situation within this project we intended to apply uh, integrated geo information across for monitoring land use land cover changes around the lake monitor the soil degradation monitor land uh, actually soil aquifer soil and uh, soil degradation soil salinization as well as aquifer salinization and the integration on food security of this actually area so the first task in this project that we actually developed was applying integrated machine learning and also deep learning methods for land use and cover mapping over the past 30 years that we could apply actually here for example you could see here that for the land use and cover mapping we developed object based image analyzers uh, and also its integration with deep learning methods and also with fuzzy so we develop a intent very actually effective approach. so we develop actually approach deep learning fuzzy object image analyzers and also developing uh, applying different machine learning methods and techniques uh, uh, applying actually some accuracy assessment methods and comparing the efficiency of different methods and techniques you all know that significance of object based image analysis this is actually very well known approach in remote sensing that it supports you to carry out very effective land use and cover by the means of segmentation applying different actually uh, features and also improving very effective uh, approach for uh, land use and cover mapping and also change detection analysis that we also applied. So you also again know that there are variety of algorithms, geometric, spatial, and also uh, different uh, I mean, integrated approaches and algorithms available in object based image analyzer that I actually copied here some of them. So you can actually employ them to improve a very uh, the efficiency of your land use and cover mapping and also developing very effective land use and cover. So within this actually study, since we had variety of land use and cover maps, something like that for example, farmlands, croplands, orchards, uh, build up area. So we developed a specific framework and also rule sets for its classes. For example, you could see here that uh, some spectral attributes like brightness, normalized difference indexes, specific layer area, or actually some other actually spectral index together with geometric index, something like the shape index, also shape similarity, shape rectangular shape that we developed for different classes. And again, you can see here application of some images and also the object-based features respective that we have considered. For example, for water body, for wetland, for settlement area, some specific features that taking from spectral and also spatial geometry context of Obaya with specific thresholds that allowed us to develop a rule set, specific and semi-automatic rule sets that you could also develop for different classes and apply for uh, time series land use and cover mapping. So when actually we carried out this specific spectral and also spatial features, we could develop land use and cover maps. For example, you could see here that we have a land use and cover for 1990, 1995, 2000, 2005, 2010, 2015, and 2020, and then analyzing the variety of land use and cover which actually were obvious in this area so we could also that's also very obvious we also developed a very effective approach uh, for accuracy assessment because object based image analysis use soft classification and so we were supposed to also have very effective uh, accuracy assessment methods for this one as well so we developed a novel approach for and called actually fuzzy demonstration virtually and spatial uncertainty analysis, which allows us to measure the accuracy of a classification from very high error to very high confidence in classification with different actual rule sets 
that's actually our own approach we have developed in this study as well. So we also apply spatial uncertainty analyzers. You also know the interstitial fair theory, which supports us to measure the uh, actually difference between disbelief and belief as uncertainty that we also applied. And you can see here result of spatial uncertainty and also the specific accuracy for each map. For example, you could see here the land use land cover map of 1990 received accuracy of about 4.85 the maximum points and they are actually accuracy that you could see here and we have also don't we have also a spatial context of this land is land cover this is actually a very good approach because we, we have here many people many researchers many students and just in break, I'm gonna actually to indicate that because we have, for example, some methods like copper coefficient, actually some other methods that they are uh, based on the statistic context. First, this developed approach support us to have statistical approach to with with spatial context as a accuracy as a seed. After that, so we, as I indicated, we developed uh, integration of deep learning and fuzzy object based image analyzers for our land use land cover mapping. And so we can part the efficiency of developed fuzzy OBIA deep learning methods against of the support vector machine, random forest, and also cart methods. And as, as you can see here, we developed several land use land cover map 1990, 95, 2000, 2005, 10, 15, and 20. And as you can see here, in all, okay, sorry, in all actually accuracy assessments that in all actually all year that we have developed by fuzzy OPI and deep learning was much higher than support vector machine and known forest and also car. Of 1990, 95, 2000, 2005, 10, 15, and 20. It actually says that the integration of fuzzy OBIA and also deep learning could be considered as a very effective approach for land with land cover mapping as an intermediate calculation from this research so far. So after land use land cover mapping, so we could also uh, apply different spectral index and also spectral context for uh, soil degradation and soil solarization mapping. You know, this is actually very uh, popular research monitoring soil degradation, soil solarization from remote sensing is actually well known and they are variety of methods and techniques. So far, you know that they are, for example, some well known a spectral index that you can see also here, for example, salinity index, salinity index SIT, and or combined spectral uh, response index, different action methods. We were applying, we wanted we want actually to apply these methods for soil solarization, but there was no idea which one is actually most effective and also most beneficial method. So we did some research in this context, we applied these methods this applied these eight methods in same area and same images, and we received these different results. For example, you could see that this soil solarization mapping actually developed by uh, different actually index, and then we we were not actually so sure that which one is actually correct. So we had to apply accuracy assessment method. So we could actually take three hundred samples in random from all of the study area. And then we could actually measure the salinity of each point and we could use them as a uh, accuracy assessment. And we could actually receive this interesting result. For example, you could see here that one method presented us the accuracy of about 0.95, the other one 0.83, and the other one actually the less one 0.61. So you could see that almost 30 percent different in accuracy. This is actually very interesting. For example, you could see that the correlation of our sampling with the uh, different methods. This was actually very high correlation, one of the most best methods, and there was, for example, not that much intensive correlation. So, but this is actually a very interesting method. So, based on these methods, uh, this uh, actually uh, results, we could 
apply different and effective methods for this one. And then when we figured out which method is actually very effective, we applied different time series actually image analyzers for, uh, I mean, monitoring the soil salinization in this area. For example, based on the effective method so far from here. For example, this is the soil salinity for 1990. 19, actually 1990, 1995, 2000, 2005, 2010, 2015, and 2020. And as you see that the red color is growing in all images, right, right, right. So it says that when the lake actually going to be dry, soil salinization is also being increased over the past years, we had very critical situation in 2015 when the lake was about to die. And so you could see that intensive soil salinization that we had that year. So, and that was actually really the challenging point. One of the major actually challenge in this area uh, is uh, land subsidence. Because as I said, that this area is uh, a very well, very well known area for farming and also for producing uh, I mean the uh, crops so and basically we have traditional surface irrigation system with just pumping water from aquifer and discharging aquifer that it's also supplies very critical challenges for example that you could see here that land subsidence was going on and again some document for intensive land subsidence that going on destroying the farmland, destroying the cities, destroying the infrastructure. So we also applied a, a SAR image analysis to monitor land subsidence that's in area. As you could see here that they were intensive land subsidence that going on is particular in this area, this and this. So these are basically very productive farmland that they actually producing uh, crops based on the, I mean, discharging of the aquifer. So because I'm actually discharging the aquifer, so it's also, I mean, charged, I mean, result some critical uh, situation like soil salinization, aquifer salinization as well. So. Uh, since we wanted to monitor the land degradation in this area, uh, we actually employed respective, respective actually criteria impacting land degradation. And then you could see here that we could actually develop topography, soil characteristic, hydrology characteristic, and also anthropic uh, characteristic and their respective sub criteria like elevation, slope, degree, aspect, probator, soil depth. And I'm not actually going to read all of them, but you can see here major criteria and sub criteria. So we developed this criteria as a spatial map with good and with high resolution actually data and with good scale for all of them. You can see here the spatial uh, representation of this criteria. And then based on the GIS uh, multi criteria decision analyzer that it has actually some specific approach like selection of criteria, criteria weighting, standardization, sensitivity analyzer, and also aggregation functions applying that, we could develop this risk for land degradation in this area. You can actually see here those areas having a high risk of land degradation in red color, very high risk actually in dark red color, high risk, and almost most area is actually being impacted by soil degradation, by land subsidence, by actually uh, as a result of climate change in this area that actually you could see here. As I said that they are about uh, actually 95,000 wheels around the lake that they are resourcing uh, most of the farmlands and we have actually the traditional irrigation systems. It's called surface irrigation system. It means actually it demands very high amount of water for irrigation of the farmlands. So over the time, over the time, farmers using this actually wheels and then they dis discharging the aquifers. So the discharge of aquifers could also 
change the balance of fresh water around the lake and also fresh aquifers around the lakes and also salty aquifers under the lakes. As you know that there is a, almost a balance between the sea salt water and also uh, actually fresh ground water aquifers. When we charge, when we discharge the uh, aquifers because of the, for example, intensive uh, cropping, intensive actually uh, irrigation and farming systems, we allow that the salty water moves and it impacts the quality of fresh water as well. So this was my, this was actually something that we could observe in this area effectively. For example, we had uh, data for 800 uh, sampling wheels around the lakes and then for different aquifers. And we had actually data for monitoring monthly water quality of this 800 actually wheels around the lake. And as you could see here that we applied some hydraulical process measurement, hydraulical chemistry analysis, and then you could see that some water, I mean, some wheels, they are, uh, they had actually very critical situation and then the salty water from the lake were impacting the uh, fresh waters in this sampling weights actually. So that you could also see here that for our sampling weights that we applied different uh, analyzers in our laboratory that we could see that, for example, the quality of our sampling weights were destroying over the time because of the lake trails. And finally, finally, we could develop based on the sampling lakes and also based on the time series uh, monitoring of the quality of aquifers in this area, we could develop aquifer salinization map in this area. You can see here that this is the aquifer salinization for 2005, 2010, 2015, and 2020. You could see that the aquifer salinization in aquifer around the lake were actually unfortunately increased. For example, in 20 years, we reached this situation from this situation. It actually shows that the aquifer salinization in this area is intensively being affected by climate change. I just wanted to have a look at the time also. Not... Okay. okay, so, uh, so far, as you could see that our, uh, the idea of this research was to analyze the trend of land use land cover that we developed by the object based image analyzers in one approaches. The other part was analyzing the trend of soil salinization that we developed by spectral indices, and then a trend of aquifer salinization that we also developed by hydraulic actually modeling and also uh, some uh, GIS-based modeling that we could develop nice match to analyze the quality of aquifers. So when we had these three major aspects, we wanted actually to analyze the integration of this land use land cover changes, soil salinization, and also aquifer salinization, and then to see what will be the integration of this environmental challenge caused by climate change on food security protection in this area. So we developed this area and also we uh, developed actually different scenario-based approaches for modeling, uh, developing actually scenarios for sustainable food production in this area. So for this aspect, actually, you can see here, uh, we first we predicted, we first we predicted the future challenges. For example, you could see here that we have actually predicted map for aquifer salinization for 2013, 14, and 15. Predicted uh, soil salinization for 2013, 14, and 15, right? And we have also in one major aspect, 
we also develop the possibility of developing, uh, producing food in this critical situation based on their respective criteria, like temperature, humidity, sun loss, plant water types, water quality, as a sustainable food production in this area, right? So you could see actually the respective criteria that you have. And this is actually a map to uh, show that in which area of the lake, around the lakes, you, we will be able to produce a food in future. For example, you could see that the potentiality of each area for producing a food in, I mean, food in croplands and farmlands. So uh, in different actual years as a food sustainable production mapping in different actual categories. Very dark green shows that the capability of farmlands for with high uh, capability for producing foods and then the less actual capability. So this map being created by integration of these parameters, one aspect. On the other aspects, we have predicted aquifer salinization, predicted soil salinization. Fine. So we integrated these three maps. You can see here, uh, you can actually see here that combination of our uh, sustainable food production with aquifer salinization in 2014. In two, sorry, in 2015, right? You could see here, for example, these dark green areas are those areas that we are able to produce a food. We can have our farmlands, okay, because of the soil situation and blah, blah. But this area in 2015 will be greatly impacted by aquifer salinization because you can see this aquifer salinization ratio. It says that in this area, it's true that we can have that we can have actually food being produced, but this area will be lost anyway until the year of 2015. And this also, again, green maps showing the sustainable area for producing food, but the dark, red dark, indicating the area that actually will be impacted by soil salinization and their integration. This is actually very nice slide. This actually shows that how many of area, uh, area will be possible to uh, use actually for food production in the future under different scenarios. Scenario by aquifer salinization and also by soil salinization. I'm, it is also good to indicate that the area that we are talking about Ormia Lake Basin, Ormia Lake Basin that we have actually this area is covering 9% of farmland in Iran. This area is actually cover 9% of all farms in Iran. And right now it feeds about 10 million people uh, living around their lake, right? So it's very critical area for food security. But our results shows that in the year of 2013, almost 8% uh, of uh, farmlands will be affected by aquifer salinization. Almost 66% of them will be affected by aquifer salinization in the year of 2014 and almost 70% of them will be impacted by aquifer salinization in the year of 2015. It's also interesting result. We have similar result for soil salinization. Almost 65.5% will be affected by soil salinization in 2013. Almost 14% affected by soil salinization in 2014. And Almost 35% will be affected by 2015 under active soil salinization. And you should also com consider the combination and integration because both of them going on same time in an area. That's also very interesting. As I said, that this area is very critical for food security of the country because 
uh, we are actually producing, uh, I mean, many uh, foods here, and then you can actually see here that, uh, I mean, uh, combination of the uh, the number of foods and those are that we, the amount that we actually produce every year. So again, that I'm just showing that not going throughout it because of the, the time. So. As a part of this research, we also wanted to uh, uh, also analyze the, uh, to develop some policies for this area. So for example, uh, the halifit crops is one of the actually uh, solution that we could also develop for this uh, area. And so we actually developed a salicornia, uh, some maps to analyze the possibility of uh, producing salicornia is actually Hyper uh, salty plant and it could be uh, could be actually growing in I mean in wetlands. So we could actually develop some. I'm just uh, going through slides because of the lack of time. So in Humboldt University of Berlin, we actually produced this plant under different salinity scenarios. Then you could see here that so we actually. Uh, grow that this plant in our laboratory and so on different actually different timelines and so we could analyze that is it possible to have this plant to be actually cultivated in the uh, area of Omea Lake uh, Basin would be fine for example or not that was actually idea and we were actually doing so we developed uh, I mean, in our laboratory, we used this crop under different scenario, and then we used uh, environmental and also different actual respective criteria to analyze which area in Urmia Lake Basin would be possible to uh, use as a base of uh, salicornia production. So we used, we applied actually different respective criteria like elevation, aspect, slope, soil salinity, pH, soil organic material evaporation, precipitation in data, sun hours, and so blah blah. So then you can also see here. And then their uh, criteria weighting, significance assessment based on the fuzzy uh, fuzzy analytical network processing, and then combination of them as an aggregation function. So then you can see here that some area are indicating very high suitability for. Uh, for the uh, for the salicornia, and with actually moderate. So that's also I think just okay. So I had some actually comment. So because of the time. So uh, yeah, you could actually see here that uh the suitability of this area for. Uh, salicornia that we actually developed and uh, that was actually a solution for this one and just one also small aspect that we also carried out in this research uh, for the we also applied that integration of gene information across for detection of the health condition of the local population in this area as well uh, as you know, that we based on the data limitation, we could only focus on very small area. So just uh, on a very small area that we could actually focus on the north west of the actual part of the lake that we could actually so we could uh, you could actually there were some uh, data that we had access for them, and they were actually about. Uh, 15,000 volunteer participants for this actually assessment. They were actually medical university or tablet that they carried out research for monitoring the health quality of uh, people, local population living in northern area of the lake. Because right now, one of the major challenges that we have is that uh, it's actually being affected the health of these people being affected by the lake drought. So they have actually many, the number of patients being increased. So they were 15,000 volunteer people that they joined to this actually study from the year of 2012 to 2020. And then they were actually monthly measure of blood pressure on them. So 
uh, we could actually have access for this data. And we could also collect some other data from the number of patients and so their address, their location. So as you could see here, in different years, 2012, 2014, 15, 16, and up to 2020, the number of people with blood pressure being increased. This is actually very evidence, very clear evidence based on the number of uh, blood pressure actually patients and the address of the and their address and I mean the location that they do live. You could see here that the number of patients being actually increased. And so uh, that was actually very challenging. So based on this uh, critical uh, situation, we also applied uh, analyzing the time series assessment of the blood pressure hyper uh, hyperoperation actually risk in this area. We could also develop some scenario based models. For example, we I mean employed some critical aspects such as uh, wind speeds, wind directions, topography situation, humidity, and then respective actually criteria to analyze which area are actually facing very critical situation in terms of the uh, population health based on the number of patients and their actually generating acute situation, their life quality situation, their actually as well as the uh, I mean topography of area, environmental criteria, the environmental condition of this area, as you could see here that these some area are very high risk. For example, this area are very high risk under high risk because they are very close to the salty lands lifted by the area and also the others. So that was also one of the major aspects that we had actually used in this area. So uh, that's, I think I'm just in one minute, uh, I'm, I will summarize this result. So as you could see here, the objective of this study was to apply different methodological framework for analyzing the climate change impacts in dying lakes. And so we developed a methodological framework for land use land cover mapping. We applied actually, if we, and we could also uh, figure out which methods and techniques are effective. We developed novel approaches for this one. We could also uh, done research uh, regarding the soil salinity monitoring from the remote sensing methods and techniques. Same for actually aquifer salinization, their integration for uh, food security under critical condition. And also we could uh, have as a part of this research monitoring the health condition of the local population in very critical area. You could see the some result actually. We could also develop some scenarios for future food security actually by means of producing which area would be possible to use uh, for actually for, for crop producing under uh, condition. 